für ein schöner Name. What for a uh, beautiful name, Star Chamber. That's the name of the historical small planetarium in Lübeck. Ralf Heinson is producer, a project manager and curator of immersive media. The following talk looks at the uh, fascinating history of this um, just rediscovered star chamber and also gives um, a view on the possibilities um, how it can be used in the future as a full dome planetarium, maybe for um, VR gaming engines. Um, if you have the impression right now um, to participate in a real a conference and a real um, a stage, then the immersion would have worked already. So stage three for Ralf Heinzon. Yeah, thank you um, and good evening. I'm happy that you are watching and that I can um, tell you something about the uh, rediscovered star chamber in Lübeck. I will talk um, something about the history in the last half an hour and the technical developments and the possibilities and also want to um, talk globally. So if you're not the usual people who go to a planetarium get into the topic. So at first the question, what have I to do with a planetarium? Where does it, where does the planetarium itself come from? Um, I'm for quite a few years in the planetarium world and work for quite a while in the um, Experimenta Bronn, which is quite a um, young planetarium, which opened in 2019. And you can see it um, on the top. It's one of the biggest uh, planetariums in Germany and also in Europe. On the right, you can see a mobile planetarium with a mobile dome, which I um, look after doing a film festival in Lübeck, quite a classical, um, which also has a focus on immersive media in the last few years. Um, on, left, on the lower left, you can see my colleagues on the um, observatory Lübeck, and I'm also in their uh, team, and we are doing astronomy, and like my colleagues uh, from the talk panel uh, Fascination Astronomy, and on the right, um, on the bottom right, and there you can you see the way up to the star chamber, which I will show you now, which is a bit of a hobby, but also um, I, mostly I work um, in Heilbronn and the Experimenter with like half um, a job and then the rest time I work freely and also mainly in Lübeck. I um, am originally a designer and made in my um, um, thesis, I work with 360 degree media, um, mostly videos at that time and um, um, VR came later. And um, like the name Expanded Reality says, that's uh, where you cross the borders of media. And that's what I want to show in my talk a bit more detailed and why it makes uh, fun. And the, the word immersive media, I don't think I have to um, explain it in our society here, but we can, um, I can explain it more in detail if there are questions and I will now show you uh, planetariums more how curious they are maybe look and I am from the northern German area so the low upper left is in the planetarium in Hamburg um, which is a place which I long to from my childhood um, it's in a water tower um, and we will see more um, later we will see more pictures of domes um, and on the Upper right is the uh, planetarium Chicago, almost as old as the planetarium Hamburg for so almost 190 years. So it's not on the lower right, it's in Beijing. It's not so planetariums are not only a product of the um, Western world. And on the left, lower left, there's um, the planetarium in Alexandria, which is also a very spectacular uh, planetarium. And it also has a slight Star Wars flair. The planetarium itself is um, invention of the 1920s, and um, it was the one. It was called the Wonder of Jena, um, a big um, 
Um, Optics company invented um, this kind of projection um, with a project projector and uh, like on the right um, we have projected on a dome and you can see on the left how many people wanted to go there and it was on the company size. Um, whoops, I didn't want to tell it, uh, but um, 1925 was then also shown in the um, German Museum in Munich. Um, and since then, planetariums are always around the world and um, there are almost a thousand installations. And um, it's mostly about science communication, especially for astrophysics. And planetariums are also having a paradigm change um, away from the astronomy and astrophysics and um, looking into other sciences. And that's also um, my role. I want to work interdisciplinary and want to make um, experimental new shows, um, as you can see in the science dome here, um, in the experimenta, but um, it also that it doesn't only linear shows, but also interactive events um, are organized. So that's my lab. My laboratory is a mobile um, dome from the um, Liebig uh, movie days, which you see on the lower le left, um, which where uh, a camera films a water bo um, ball and um, um, the, um, projects into couples, and on the on the right you see a VR, um, and there is a module in a Unity environment, so the um, you can see the image from the virtual environment, um, which is projected as a full dome format uh, onto the dome, and it's very interesting, and you have new interaction uh, possibilities and new um, techniques and technologies and 2018 was um, the jubilee of the um, uh, um, and I was in a, in a um, in Lund, um, I made Carsten Andersen, and there was um, the star Kammer the, 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 of um, Copenhagen. And he said, hey, Ralf, you are from Lübeck. I have um, someone uh, from Lübeck. And um, I was very excited. And oh, you have a star projector from Lübeck. Uh, that can't be. And um, yeah, it's from a business from uh, Jena. And I couldn't take it really seriously. But um, I went with this information home and go to the um, city archive and uh, found actually something about it. And um, there was a business which built a planetarium in business um, in Lübeck. And it was very exciting for me. And that was the first um, historical um, passion for me. And I was looking for it and with um, Many um, ways I found at some point at the star, um, star chamber, um, which is exactly the same word as in Danish, and I found it in the in a school um, primary and a school Saint Jürgen, which was um, when it was founded. It was called the uh, Kloster Yard School, and you can see the dome um, made from kappa on the image and. Um, I was fascinated with it and I uh, looked into it and tried to find out what there was. Um, and um, 1931, in the late 20s, the, um, the number of pupils rose and the city of Lübeck thought about building new um, um, schools and they wanted to make a new type of school. Uh, reform school and um, it was very political at that time um, after the in the time after the first world war the um, uh, that time ended and there was a new way of thinking and they wanted to have a whole thinking and thought skew newly. And there was the magazine Le Miron du Monde, and there was a school. Um, there was this very extraordinary um, school with um, nature science laboratory, and you can see. Uh, 
Uh, microscopes and physics laboratories, chemistry laboratories, photo laboratories, and this was very special at that time. And it was also special that um, the the teacher thought about um, installing a planetarium. And it was really new at the time, as we just heard. And um, it was from Jena. And I haven't found an explicit source, but it must be clear that the um, school politicians found out these things, um, this um, development from Lübeck and found out and, and the site um, technology worked only for big planetariums and there was a new development. So it was high costs, there were high costs and therefore they couldn't pay the planetarium from the school. So but they were fascinated to uh, look into the universe as part of a universe of a science um, understanding of the world and then they thought about doing it their own and then there was a physics teacher the dr hans kasserbaum who wanted to do it and um, he uh, invented his own kind of planetarium and he realized it with an electrotechnician and um, a school politician named Sebald schwarz and they made their own um, independent um, planetarium and uh, made a pentant um, and became one from Munich from 1933, um, two years after the opening of the school and after the opening of the star chamber. And um, it wasn't only a projector, but also a whole um, planetarium, a whole planet solution. It was called um, uh, teaching aid. So they uh, tied their, uh, their, severed their connections to the company, to the Zeiss company, while honoring them, but they stressed that they had a different solution. Uh, so that was different to the highly developed solution by the company, uh, where they had just a point source of light here, as you can see in the technical drawing, and this point source uh, was uh, shiny, shown through a, a sphere, uh, uh, kind of like a, a camera. Um, and uh, you can see the two developers here. Hans Kassebaum, the physics teacher, and Ernst Nachtiger, the electrical engineer, uh, who had a workshop in the old city, in the old town of Lübeck. And that's how the development looked. This is a professional promotional photo that they took. You see the uh, sphere, uh, and you can just make out the holes in at the top of it, and you can see a number of switches. And they have functions that we will talk about later because we you couldn't just switch on the projector on and off with those switches. Uh, you could actually simulate the tilt of the Earth's axis and the rotation uh, with the knobs, but you could do even more. Uh, I have an overview chart here. Uh, on the left, you see the projector in a dark uh, depiction, and the middle top image shows you a modern uh, image from today with a red background that I'll talk about later. And on the right, you see uh, something. This is a solution that they developed it. You don't normally see. They have <coughs> they have this plaster uh, surface on the dome, and they put small lights into that. You would think that you would use LEDs these days, but these are so-called telephone string lights, uh, the kind of lights that would be used in switchboards, uh, the telephone system. And on the low left, you can see the switches there. Every single constellation could statically be switched on and off this way. And this way, you had a didactic uh, presentation of the various constellations and show them. And uh, as you can see on the top left, uh, with darkness, you would see the stars lighting up and children could see the whole sky and, sky and search for constellations. So didactic, didactically a very interesting approach. And they had a, <clears throat> a shadow of the city of Lübeck uh, on the horizon. 
and perhaps to answer a few questions, there wasn't just the northern uh, hemisphere that they could show, but also the southern hemisphere. So they, just, <clears throat> the spheres could be exchanged and project the southern sky that way. Um, what is interesting, uh, what is important for me to stress out that this was not a static thing that was built in and then in operation, it was two enthusiasts' work who can continue developing it further and where we are today, I'm going to talk about later, we've modernized it. We are actually continuing a tradition that has been there all the time, at least in the 1930s. <clears throat> there was the inauguration and then <clears throat> some switches were brought to the center of the dome um, to make it possible to operate the whole system from there. And in the 70s and 80s, there was a wooden paneling that was brought in. You can see that. So that was very good for the acoustics of the place. And uh, this wood paneling was used to lower the reflection, the sound reflections in, in the room. And jumping forward now to um, the present, and uh, through the, this acquaintance I made in Denmark, I was actually um stumbled upon the historical roots in Lübeck and I and I talked to someone and they were very surprised um in the school that someone was interested in in this uh, chamber that had been kind of dormant there and in the, when they had an anniversary and and had a new building that they moved into as you can see in the image there was a euphoria that broke out where people said okay let's go into that star chamber and see what new technology we can put in there the head of the school knew about my activities uh, at the festival with my mobile dome and asked me whether what I was doing in the mobile dome, I could maybe make to make <clears throat> get to work in, in their fixed installation to the video projections that I made. And uh, I have to digress a bit here. You have uh, two people in the background here. There was another important actor that came along because what happened was I was still doing my historical research in parallel and I actually came across <clears throat> the um, descendants of uh, Mr. Kasselbaum. And you can see Christian Kasselbaum, his grandson, who didn't know a lot about the family history. His grandfather hadn't talked much about his invention or didn't leave many notes. And when I confronted him with this whole story and, and the, uh, was able to give him the whole context, he was very surprised. And since early this year, he is actually retired and was looking for a new hobby. And immediately he said he was going to get active on this. And he even went as far as um, donating some of the new technology to us, a new projector that I'm going to talk about. So <clears throat> this <clears throat> trio here, uh, the head of the school, uh, Christian Kassebaum on the left, uh, the grandson of one of the two inventors and me in the middle, um, we went ahead and digitalized the whole star chamber. And the intention was to um, still maintain the historical device, not just for historical reasons, but this was a device that really was able to encourage enthusiasm. And um, with a video projection system, we wanted to have a digital imagery in the dome. And uh, we uh, chose a system with a media server that was very variable and uh, was able to uh, combine all kinds of systems in a linear way. And we wanted the whole electrics uh, be controlled through uh, uh, a kind of control as you would have it in a smart home. And the uh, so-called cove light, the uh, margins of the dome, the lighting for that, uh, we wanted to replace those with modern RGB LEDs. And of course, we wanted to add sound. It's important to know that 
at the time we only uh, in, in the early days there was only a kind of presentation talk kind of situation no sound installations we were we added that and the whole technology should be should be so simple that the teachers in the school and the students uh, who are very busy not just in the times of the pandemic but they always are very busy preparing for lessons they want they, they would they should be given a technology that they could start with straight away so it should be very easy to operate that was a very important objective um, something that's easy to learn and easy to use and you can see a few pictures here from the rebuilding works um, we found the whole historic uh, cables and there was a, a pedestal that we had to remove uh, we had this mechanism for uh, switching parts that I'm going to talk about. We installed sound and we had an extensive rebuilding process here and tried to make it as minimally invasive as possible to preserve the charm uh, of the olden days. And uh, the only see is the addition of the new protection technology. You see the results here and you can see the old projector is still in place on its new foundation. You see this wheel here, which you can use to uh, kind of get the old projector down and put the new one in place. There is a schematic uh, depiction here. If you turn this wheel, the old projector, the star, all is uh, lowered down to the right, and the new projector, which is a fairly large device from the from the event uh, business, uh, that can stereoscopically project things that comes up. And there is a lock, the uh, this pedal that uh, may remind you of a sewing machine, the red one. Uh, now that that locks the uh, whole device so that uh, the uh, exchanging mechanism is controlled. And uh, this is how a digital projection looks in the old dome. You see the various dots here, the, the black dots, as you can see those in the stream. This is where the old active lights are still preserved and uh, the projection is uh, moved to the screen. And a new curiosity, it's something that was never uh, intended this way, but there was an old historical table uh, which we added and on that we put a computer for the media server uh, with a software that we developed which uh, controls all the video signals in the various formats and uh, projects it into the dome and the circular grid shows you the dome actually yeah and uh, the whole controls here uh, of the electric electrics um, Again, that's an application from the smart home area, customized for this purpose. And uh, on the left, upper left, you see the old star projector that you can switch on and off, something you would be doing earlier on the uh, switchboard that you saw uh, with these old uh, switches, old plastics. This is all moved to this now, and redundantly also there are um, there is uh, this keyboard here. You see the historic uh, signs here um, uh, with all the constellations on them. And you can operate those without the tablet. But of course, using the tablet is very elegant because you can control everything and uh, the video projector can be started that way. So, um, and so on. Um, I prepared a small video from two to three days ago, and I will um, play it now. Um, and you see how I, um, after the um, star light was um, turned off and changed the couple, um, the dome edge light on blue, and um, um, and put the video projector on and um, change from the old to the new projector um, to the full dome. Um, video image, um, the test image, and you see it goes up and the um, you barely need to use any force. So um, it's very um, fine uh, made. So every um, T 
teacher can do it and I will go out of the picture and um, I start a full um, a video sequence and um, I filmed with my phone into the dome so you get a slight impression how it looks if you are in this um, dome in this four meter dome and um, watch this video and I jump forward in this video um, th you can see here 360 degree video um, and um, those uh, videos um, were fitted to the dome and multiple CGI scenes and uh, we're jumping a bit around. It's not only astronomical but um, many different um, topics. It's a small trailer of, of topics that are relevant for the school and um, it's not only science but also art and uh, music videos and I will talk later so you can do uh, a lot of different things and you get a feeling how it, um, it is. It's not that easy on a uh, video stream. Normally I would have said uh, come over and um, I will tell you later in the discussion how you can come to us and um, what are the applications of our modernized um, star chamber. So the old projector should be useful furthermore and we also uh, want to use the active lighting um, star constellations, we want to use Fulham videos, uh, planetarium movies, there are quite a few of them to um, many different um, science topics and um, Obviously, it's a planetarium, so we're using uh, planetarium software, um, um, a classic a Stellarium or something like World War Telescope, Open Space, there are quite a few different um, applications. Uh, one of Sebastian Barton, um, he helped me uh, quite a lot um, to fit them to our system and um, he helped me uh, to have a live projection geometry and you can um, add video feeds um, which you um, usually would only use for VR display, head displays or for um, 360 degree tours so they are rendered live on the dome but you can also use um, standard um, images videos and websites and um, if you have NDI and 360 degree screens, which you can also use, and um, if you have game engines uh, like in Unity, and there is a really nice plugin which you can um, use to make a from a 3D um, from a 3D seam to a full dome screen, and then you can take from a gaming situation in from Unity, which you can send from Unity into the um, Star Dome, and so. So you can see uh, a live image from everything, um, from an interactive situation, from a game. Um, you can install controllers and lighthouses and it works quite well. And quite classically, you can use um, uh, get a video from a capture card of an HDMI stream when you're using a camera, for example. And for the school, it's great because you can also uh, not only look at astronomy and physics, but also at um, Informatic, um, computer science and game back also, art, arts, music, biology, everything that happens in school, even theater or sports can be realized and there aren't any um, boundaries for the fantasy. And that should also lead to that the pupils themselves will be um, active and there are working groups of the pupils where there will be more of them and the um, pupils um, already made a project with a virtual tour of the school um, and the children made virtual tours and you could use it as a um, second time in the star chamber and what's also quite interesting is the cooperation um, with the observatory in which team I also am where I am also a member and um, for us and the observatory um, the astrophotographies are really it's really interesting to can actually present it properly and here are some pictures from Oliver and from the uh, Milky Way and it's also really great because we have a new dome in the um, observatory and you can make a 360 degree um, ca camera and with a um, uh, you can see here the replica of the observatory dome and there as um, a 360 video or image and what's also quite interesting is there was um, uh, 
Bereich, also analog zu den uh, Nordischen Filmen. There was some meeting of the Nordic um, Planetarium Associations and the Moving Days also had something and there are lots of colleagues came there and they were all really did it all really great with me together and in two years there will be 100 years planetarium and the star chamber will make an important role because it was before in the international um, scene of the planetarium it wasn't um, recognized and as the goal it should be acceptable for everyone thank you for your um, for your listen and i wish for a visit for of a visit of a planetarium your possibilities there are the times also flies like in this talk where many people have um, listened closely and watched and unfortunately we can't uh, give immersion how many people are thankfully clapping and are looking with their open bright eyes and were listening fascinated thank you very much and as feedback directly at the very first intense feedback um, really great um, talk and um, more interested questions and what you said at the end um, and I really want to go into the planetarium again that already um, influenced it um, which other words can you um, well, uh, that went to me, I guess. Uh, first of all, thank you so much for the opportunity to talk about this too. It's a huge, huge pleasure to be able to do this here. And thanks for the praise. Uh, so what can the Star Chamber do? It's very hard to limit, actually. Everything you could uh, display as a 3D data set or register uh, could be reproduced, and that's the interesting thing. In these days, this is so interesting because you have this exploding degree of 3D registration through photometry, through 3D scans. The technology is getting more and more simplified and accessible, and we have all kinds of 3D models that are being created, museums that have originals that hopefully they would restitute a return to their origins. They, they create models of those, and that is an important aspect too, isn't it? It's simple to, uh, for a teaching person to, to um, communicate this. And uh, yes, and that's the interesting thing for me. With a colleague, I am actually developing something using RS Unity to make an application for planetariums accessible and for the Tassar chamber too, where, that you can put into a planetarium and then just put your specs, the glasses into the corner and uh, you have the uh, you have a normal 16 by 9 screen whose image you simply put into the dome rather than onto the screen. There are two modes. You can have an object mode, which you can use to kind of take a 3D object into your hand. You can almost understand it that way because the controller then represents the object. And we use scans of beetles from the zoological gardens in Kiel, near Lübeck. And uh, I was able to turn the controller and that would turn the Beatles model in the dome. You could kind of show the interior of the beetle, show its jaws, uh, of course, in a hugely inflated size. And it can be done in a room mode as well. I can walk through rooms and uh, I can use models that have been registered by photogrammetry. And the great thing in this immersive media is that the screen uh, with its limited frame uh, is overcome and if the image goes around your head you actually are in that space and the replication of the original is very real and very close
fiel natürlich erstmal nur eine mögliche Anwendung ein in eurer vier. Um, my simple mind, I, my first uh, idea was the um, making uh, an eager sugar in the four meter couples. But this idea, what you just said, to go on is a question. Is there a technology for the living room to uh, have a realistic um, star? Um, um, star sky projected on the walls. Well, well that's if I think of this multi projector setup, um, if you, you could build this beetle in the living room, uh, there are systems for uh, actually compensating for the overlapping projections and all that. They are actually uh, low cost these days. Uh, if you can't build a dome, you have a cubed shaped room, cube shaped room. Uh, you have applications like this in universities, these cave solutions, they are just as immersive. And the nice thing about a dome, and that as a, as a kind of a plea for having a dome rather than a, a rectangular shape, is that the corners are not as visible. And the projection, uh, the illusion is kind of distorted by the corners in the room. Uh, and in a dome, the room is kind of dissolved more perfectly. But that's just details, it's, it can all be realized. And what you developed there was, would again, be an invention from Lübeck. Yeah, that is the case. And uh, I call this the uh, sun clock. Uh, this is a u globally unique solution, something I couldn't put into the top with the limited time. This star ball, this black sphere, it does need to be in the geometrical center of the dome to display the stars correctly. But the projector uh, with its, with its uh, fish eye lens are in the same room. They are in, in, their, in their respective way. And that's why I had the solution of wheeling the one in and the other out. And there is no single planetarium worldwide, which makes us very proud that we came to this idea. Uh, we actually continued the work of the founders. It's actually an, uh, an homage to them um, with, who came up with their own do-it-yourself solution. And it's a great feeling to ha have this heritage and use it exactly, ex at least the idea. Thanks for this. Um, how were in the old technology um, the stars were projected on the um, dome? Was there uh, certain uh, measurements or? Um, well, that's an really interesting. In this uh, Lübeck solutions, it's quite uh, difficult to show. Um, you can't see my mouth, I think. Um, in this black uh, dome, in the surface, there are small um, um, holes may, um, drilled in, and um, through these um, holes, the um, most important stars of um, are shown. Ich höre dich leider nicht mehr, gerade an der spannenden Stelle. Ich versuche mal zu überbrücken, weil ich könnte mir vorstellen, dass bei dieser Technik es keine zweite Chance gab, wenn man sich das mal verbohrt hat. Ralf, hörst du mich noch? Wir hören dich leider nicht. You... Ralf, can you still...